Welcome back. Uh, time to talk sports uh, with the World Athletics Championships over in Oregon, usually uh, successful for Nigeria, some would say. Uh, attention has now shifted to the 2022 Commonwealth Games home of holding in, the, in Birmingham, the United Kingdom, where no fewer than 5,000 athletes from 72 Commonwealth nations and territories will jostle for 280 medals on offer as the Games begin. Uh, Nigeria is one of the competing countries and will uh, be represented by 93 athletes comprising 41 male and 52 female who are already ready to take on their counterparts from the rest of the Commonwealth countries for the battle for supremacy in nine sports. Uh, fresh from smashing a World Cup record at the 2022 World Athletics Championship, uh, Tobia Musa will be aiming to defend the gold medal she won at the 2018 edition of the Games in the Gold Coast, Australia. Also, silver medalists that have just concluded World Athletics uh, Championship in Oregon, the United States of America, Ace Brume, will be the signature of all eyes in the long jump event. How well will Team Nigeria fare? Monday Thomas is back. He's a sports journalist. He joins us from Uyo Aquabum State. Monday, nice to have you uh, for the second time this week. That doesn't always happen. Uh, things are getting better. There's a saying I, I love to use that he was ready. You don't have to get ready. So I'm always ready for sports any, any day. Fantastic. Fantastic. You always sound ready. Um, uh, what, what are the chances of Team Nigeria and the Commonwealth Games? Uh, it seems you know, people think the Commonwealth Games is, is easy peasy or easier than the World Athletic Championships and uh, the uh, Olympic Games. Will Nigeria be, uh, be bringing home more medals, you know, uh, this time around? Yeah, I think you're sported by saying that because I have records this morning to prove that uh, at the Commonwealth Games, you're always having a great time. We are always going there to have fun. We're always going there to, of course, uh, partake in the medal lifting and not just partake by being a number. And uh, if you take a look at the uh, 2018 edition of the Commonwealth, Nigeria won nine silver, nine silver medals, nine gold medals, and four well as six bronze medals. So in total, that was 24 medals. But being fresh out of the uh, the World Athletic Championship, when you see the when when we saw the likes of uh, Ace Brome and as well as Toby Amosan, I mean, sports being a game of momentum, and for other athletes who've seen that uh, Nigeria can, of course, to not just be a part of a, a competition, they can also go there and gain the much needed medals that that, that is, uh, of course, uh, deserved of them. And we've seen, like you mentioned, about 93 athletes, uh, 21 officials to represent Nigeria. In, uh, in uh, I think, nine sports, uh, we, we are hoping for the very best. Certainly, the best is uh, certainly what we are looking forward to. And uh, being that the, nine, the last edition, we got 24 medals. I'm, I'm seeing that Nigeria can get 50 medals. The likes of Toby and Busan, prolific. And just as you mentioned, Este Brome is going to be the center of attraction. Of course, she has really improved win the, uh, winning a silver medal at the Doha 2019, going ahead to win a silver medal at the, of course, World Athletic Championship. She was also a medalist right there at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. So you see our progress. It is slow and steady. She's consistent with what she's doing. And uh, let's not be very biased by talking about Isaac Brome and uh, as, as well as Tobia Musa. We also have other Nigerians who will be hoisting the flag in a very fantastic way. The likes of Aruna Quadri, who is the team captain uh, for the tennis category. He's also an African champion, a Nigerian champion for that matter. So Aruna Quadri is also going to be someone we should also vouch for. Uh, he's certainly going to be someone we should bang on. And the likes of uh, Favor Philly in the 100 meter, not forgetting Ophion Edem, Edem, also in the table tennis. Uh, Blessing of Buburudu and uh, the captain as well, Namdi Innocent. I mean, we have stars to, of course, uh, coast them with so much gold medals. And, of course, I'm looking forward for the gold. I don't want Nigeria to slack uh, behind the top 10. I want them to see us right there, maybe top five, because in the Commonwealth World Games, it's always a time where we go there, not just to partake, but also to get the much-needed medals. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that you talked about the other athletes, apart from S.A. Brume and uh, Toby and Musa, who... Uh, hold prospects for Nigeria. Um, let's look at um, Blessing of Bordudu, uh, who won a gold medal at the last Commonwealth Games in the Gold Coast, uh, Australia, uh, women's 68 category. Uh, um, you know, what do you think she, she can do this time? Do you think she can defend her gold medal? 
she's the captain. She 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 has to lead by example. <laughs> so being a gold medalist at the Commonwealth Games, you want to defend it, and she needs to defend it because a lot of people want to be like the Tobia Musan. They want to be the most talked about athletes in the country. So it, it serves as a great uh, motivation from what, what we saw Tobia Musa. And I'm, I'm thinking, blessing Oboburudu, being the captain of the side, is going to lead in a fantastic way for others to follow. So blessing Oboburudu, I think she can, of course, uh, defend her gold medal. Uh, the last time she won it was in 2018 in Australia. So I think she can do so in the 2022 edition. All right. Uh, you mentioned Aruna Quadri. It's interesting to see he's still there. It seems uh, these, uh, <laughs> tab these table tennis players are, have, are like cats with nine lives. They, it takes a while for them to go away. Is um, Aruna Quadri still the Aruna Quadri we know? Because, I mean, I can't remember the first time I heard his name. <laughs> you know, is he still as sharp as he used to be? Um, and this Nigeria is still as strong as the nation used to be? you know, a uh, powerhouse in table tennis. Do we have some, some, some others coming through and what are the prospects for, of Nigeria in, in that field, in that sport of table tennis, do you feel? Bottles, the older the berry, the sweeter the juice. Tennis is not a game of so much physicality. It's a game of the mind. It's a game of psychology. It's how, mental, how mentally stable you are. And Aruna Quadri... The way he's growing old, he's getting finer by age. And I think he's still a runner quadri. We know he, he's got lots of pedigree in this particular uh, sport. So uh, I, I don't think that's a question at all. Aruna quadri is going, going there to, of course, make Nigerians proud because he's a fantastic tennis player, not just by saying, but by the records he has accumulated for himself. He's still a runner quadri, we know. And just as I say, he just needs to orchestrate what he has to do on the table. He doesn't need to move around, so he doesn't need more physicality. He doesn't even need age to be on his side. He is still the man we can trust. Do, do you think um, the, the, the preparations for the Commonwealth Games were adequate? Okay. I, I think they were because uh, uh, before, I think five days before the event started, the opening ceremony. By the way, the opening ceremony saw a uh, Sankara drum that is in the Yoruba tribe. I mean, that goes to show that you are highly respected at the Commonwealth Games, but that's by the way. And uh, but for the preparation, you can see that uh, the Minister of Sport was uh, there in the UK, so he was in a meeting, a particular meeting, where he was talking to the stakeholders on how we can improve the game and possibly arrange it for it to come to Nigeria. I'm not sure about that, but the preparation we saw the team A, the bash A, that we had contingents already in the UK at least five days before uh, the opening ceremony yesterday. So I think by that we can say that they're well prepared, the logistic was in place. And I just pray that these outlets, uh, as it was said, that the money and the bonuses have been assigned. I just hope they get uh, their proceeds after the tournament or after the competition. All right. Uh, we just came off the heels of the World Athletic Championship in Oregon, and now we're talking about uh, uh, the Commonwealth Games. Uh, also, we just came... Uh, of uh, a very successful uh, African Women's uh, uh, Cup of Nations in Morocco. Um, uh, we had to talk about that last time. And now we're talking about the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. Uh, what are your thoughts on the squad that the Falcons is taking to this competition? Because, I mean, some reports suggested that some opponents of Nigeria, like the French, uh, have unleashed uh, what they call a killer squad. You know, is Nigeria, do you think, prepared? Are we going with the best we can for this tournament? What are the chances of the Falconets? Well, I'm not saying disrespect to your opponent, but uh, if you focus on what you have, if you focus on your strength, then you shouldn't be really worried about what the other opponent is using. Fantastic. Nigeria, of course, made it to uh, the World Cup for the 10th consecutive time. And uh, in case you don't know, Nigeria, the Falconets are featured in all the edition of the under uh, 20 FIFA Women's World Cup since it started in 2002, hosted by Canada and uh, the United States of America won it. And now talking about the squad, and I would like to start by saying great job from uh, the head coach, Christopher Danjima, who also doubles as the head coach of uh, Nazara Amazon. So he's got lots of uh, experience. I mean, he knows what it is to be a coach here in a local scene and also get to manage players who are coming uh, from, the, uh, for, from the foreign side of things. But if you take a look at this squad, you see that basically they are the home base. Most, most of them play in the NWFL, which is the Nigeria Women's Professional League here in the country. The players we have, prolific players. I mean, Flores, Sebastian scored a hat-trick against uh, Senegal in that 7-2 trashing before we made it to the World Cup. 
We have the likes of a blessing of who is also a very clinical forwarder and also joy omewa we should not really be concerned about the uh, french side although we should know their weaknesses and how they are approached to things but we should be focused on improving our strength because in a football game you you just basically need to outscore your opponent right i know you need to keep clean sheets but if you can keep our score your opponent then you you've uh, Got on the better side of things. I mean, Nigeria take on France on the 11th, which is certainly going to be not the most difficult game because I think the most difficult game will come against uh, Canada. So that that will be later on. But we need to beat we need to beat France and then see how we can uh, deal with South Korea and probably beat Canada to qualify to the uh, next round. All right. Uh, there are some some allegations of, of abandonment of this under 20 uh, squad by the. Nigerian Football Federation, of course, Samaji Penic has been busy in Morocco as well. Uh, the allegations that the Falconers had, had to have had to trek um, to the uh, training venue at the Moshida Biola Stadium in Abuja uh, with no proper arrangement made for uh, transportation to and from their, their, their hotel. Uh, we also told that um, even for the friendly matches they've been playing at the Abuja Stadium, they had no uh, uh, match officials. They had to beg some people who came around uh, to help them officiate uh, the matches. Um, I, I saw somewhere there, there's a friendly planned against Colombia, but it's also uh, been pointed out that uh, two weeks to the tournament, the team had not played any serious, any serious friendly match. Uh, what are your thoughts? What do you know about this? What are your thoughts on this? And it's always very embarrassing that uh, every time we sit here to talk sports, we, we will start with, uh, by talking about the good side of things and uh, probably end by talking about the negative side of uh, uh, this uh, crazy managed football, sport management here in the country. It's quite embarrassing that these ladies, and I mean, they're ladies, they're not the men, and I think they need more attention. I'm not, I'm not trying to be sexist right here, but I think those ladies, they need to be taken care of. And uh, you would say that the NFF president was very busy, but of course you have people working under you. You should be able to delegate duties. And it's quite a shame that these ladies have not really been exposed to uh, the friendly games they needed, the right preparation. And this is certainly going to have a crushing uh, consequence for the Falconets. Although they did so well in the qualifying game, scoring uh, scoring more than the opponent, and not just three goals, but of course outscoring them. But you're going to play against uh, uh, the world. You're playing against sides that are exposed to great facilities. I mean, you're in a group with France, who are one of the top countries in Europe as far as women's football is concerned. Uh, by the way, the Estonian team were just knocked out of the Euros. So, they are, of course, their uh, age football team will also uh, want to do well as, uh, as well. But it's quite a shame that these ladies are not exposed to the right facilities, the right preparation. And uh, if we see them underperform, if we see them on the perform, we shouldn't be surprised hmm. because uh, football is a game of momentum. You're as good as your last game. When you don't have the adequate preparation, you are going to struggle. But we, we pray that uh, Coach uh, Christopher Dandino will be able to, of course, uh, help their mentality and let them know that they need to represent Nigeria in the finest of ways. And the NFF, it is not yet over. They still have about, let's say, 12, 13 days to make amends, to talk to the girls, to maybe give them some incentives, letting them know that they are important to Nigerian football and do their very uh, best to make sure they have the right support. Uh, it's not too late. I, I hope the, they are listening, but it's not too late. They can still do something. I mean, but for the preparation, I don't think it is, uh, it is, it is late for the preparation, but you can bolster their morale. You can bolster their mentality going to these games. All right. All right. Uh, interesting uh, uh, um, uh, analysis by you. I know it runs in the family. <laughs> and uh, always a thrill to have you join us every single week on, on, on this segment of Sports Discussions. Let's see what happens. Let's hope for the best. Maybe the Falconets will give us a better fortune than the Falcons. It's a tough call. Like you said, they have to face um, uh, uh, Canada after France. And you have the Germans and others lurking in there. But I want to thank you very much for your time, uh, Monday Thomas, and look forward to the next conversation with you. Seriously, I'm always uh, excited about this particular platform. And uh, it's seven days to the start of the English Premier League. And uh, as you say, you're an Arsenal fan. I can't wait to see what Gerbil Jesus, you know, the, the writing on the world, Jesus safe. So, Let's see how it goes. We'll wait for that. We'll wait for that. <laughs> Indeed, wait for that. Thank you very much. Uh, All right.
All right, then that's the size of our package. Uh, Monday Thomas has exposed me uh, as being an Arsenal fan. Well, I can't, I can't reject it. Uh, if you check you know, the media landscape, most media officials are personal Arsenal fans. You can check that out. All right, my name is Kofi Bartels. Follow us at Plus TV Africa on all social media platforms, including YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. On YouTube, we also at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. From all of us here at the Broadcast Center in Victoria Island, Lagos, thank you very much for your time. We return next week. Have a fantastic weekend. Good morning.